Hi, welcome back to my channel here at Sassy Cassie Sews. It's been a while since I posted a video, but I want to get better about doing that and teaching you some of the fundamentals of sewing. Today we're going to start with talking about grain of fabric and following grain lines when using patterns. I'm going to explain to you the importance of using a grain line and also how to prepare your fabric so that you know that you have a perfect grain line. So first let's start by talking about what is a grain line. So a grain line is the direction uh, that the threads are woven together in a woven fabric. So when you have a woven fabric, you have threads that are going crosswise and you have threads that are going lengthwise. The crosswise threads are referred to as weft. That's the textile uh, reference for it. It's called the weft threads and the lengthwise, the lengthwise threads are called the warp threads. Okay, so you have warp and weft, lengthwise and crosswise. Um, the ends of your fabric, these are the parts that are woven really tightly together and finished. They're called finished edges. They're woven so tightly together that they really don't fray. I know it kind of looks like it's frayed at the end, but it's actually not frayed. That's just leftover threads. Um, it's not going to fray. This is the part that is held through the machines as the fabric is being woven. And this is called the selvage. So on all of your fabrics, you will have, let me fold this in half here for you. You will have these ends that either uh, they may or may not have writing or a white edge to them. Uh, usually one edge has white with the writing and the other edge is just kind of that print, but it's still, you can see that it's really tightly woven together. So the lengthwise threads are parallel to our selvage edges. And usually when we're going to cut out on a fabric, we will follow this uh, selvage. We'll use our grain line on these selvage edges, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, so uh, I explained the lengthwise and the crosswise threads. There's also one more direction that comes with fabric and that's called the bias. And the bias is the uh, diagonal direction on your fabric. The bias, when you cut something on the bias, it adds more drape to uh, that, whatever it is that you're making. Like if you're making a long drapey gown, if you cut it on the bias, that's what's going to give your um, dress drape. So crosswise and lengthwise don't quite give you that drape. Okay, so now I wanna show you up close a little bit about the fabric. So we're gonna move over there. Okay, like I was explaining before, every pattern has a grain line. So the grain line usually is going to be perpendicular with this selvage edge. I'm gonna give you a closer look at that in just a minute, but it's really important that you have your patterns placed correctly on the correct grain line because if you just throw this pattern down any which way, then it's going to affect the shape of whatever garment you're designing and the stretch. So if you're placing this kind of crooked and it's more on a on the bias cut, then your fab your what's going to happen is that whatever it is you're making is going to end up being more stretchy as you continue to wear it over and over again. It's going to stretch out of place and it's going to hang funny. You might have one side hanging a little bit longer than the other, like if you're making a skirt or even the end of a shirt. One side may hang longer than the other because of the pull and the stretch. So uh, grain line is really important. You want to make sure that you're placing that grain line where it needs to be, which is usually perpendic uh, sorry, parallel to the selvage, unless otherwise stated in your pattern directions. Okay, so now I wanna to talk to you a little bit about fabric preparation. Sometimes when the, uh, the fabric is being processed and it's being rolled onto bolts, uh, the threads get twisted out of place and so it's not actually on the perfect grain. And it's impossible when they're cutting your fabric at the fabric store, it's impossible to cut on a perfect grain. It's really hard to see, but these fibers are so tightly woven together. If you took a magnifying glass to it, you could see a little bit better how the threads kind of twist out of place and they're not at their perfect angles that they should be. So before you cut into a block of fabric, it's really important to make sure that your fabric is straight and on grain. How do you tell if your fabric is straight and on grain? Well, when you take your two corners here, this is one way you can tell, when you take your two corners up here and hold them perfectly together, you wanna see how your selvage edges line up. Your selvage edges should be matching perfectly, which as you can see, this is kind of hard to do two-handed, but as you can see, they're not lined up perfectly. This bottom layer is showing more than this top layer. 
That also means that when I go to, to move the selvages so that they are together perfectly, and when I fold my fabric over to the fold, the fold is actually going to be twisted because the fabric is not straight. I'm gonna give you a close up look at that. So as you can see, I have my corners perfectly aligned right here and I matched my selvage edges so that they're, um, the edges are matching each other. And then you wanna be able to push your fabric over to the side and have it lay flat. As you can see, my fabric is twisting right here at the edges, uh, sorry, at the fold which means that it's not laying flat and it means that our fabric is not properly on grain. We want this to just be a smooth fold over here. Okay, so how do we fix that problem? I'm gonna show you now what we need to do to get our fabric perfectly back on grain and to untwist all of those fibers. So the first thing that you're gonna do, I'm gonna reach over here for my scissors. You're going to um, turn your selvage towards you like this okay and now you're just going to take a small cut into your selvage okay so it's going to be a perpendicular cut to your selvage you're not cutting alongside your selvage you're cutting across your selvage and then this is going to be kind of startling it's always startling when i show this to people but you're actually going to rip your fabric all the way across on that crosswise grain. What happens when you rip it is that it rips completely along the same crosswise uh, thread versus when you cut it, remember they're woven tightly together, but if you're cutting your fabric across the top and everything's twisted out of place, you're gonna be cutting a crooked line. And that's why your grain line isn't matching perfectly and why you're having that twisting in the fold. So we're gonna cut a little part into the fabric at the top and then we're just gonna rip across the fabric like this. All the way across. So now this top edge is completely straight because it's been cut on that crosswise grain. Just to give you another visual, you can see how crooked your fabric was by looking at uh, the strip that you just tore off. So you can see how it's skinnier down here and then it gets wider over here at this part. This is how crooked they cut your fabric. You can just see by the amount of unevenness in your rip. Okay, so now that you've cut your top edge, you also want to cut your bottom edge, or rather rip. So we're gonna go again across the selvage. These are my two selvage. Um, so I'm gonna be going into the selvage, cutting into the selvage once again, just a little past that selvage line, and I'm gonna rip all the way down, okay? Sometimes uh, when you're ripping that, it might rip off like right here and not make it all the way to the end. That just means that your fabric is really crooked. So take another cut a little further up and just rip again, and it needs to go and rip all the way across from side to side. So here's my other edge. You can see that it wasn't quite as bad as the other side, but now it is perfectly straight. Okay, now that the fabric is ripped, you might assume that we're not gonna have any twisting in the fold once we match our selvage edges together. That's actually not quite true. There's still one more thing we have to do. We're going to once again match our corners up and bring the other finger over here to this fold and as you can see, it's still crooked. So you might be thinking, I just cut across the top. Why is it still crooked? Remember that our threads are still twisted. And so we have to kind of get those threads twisted back into place, like pushed back into place. So what you're going to do, hopefully this is all in the frame of the camera, um, you're going to take the shorter side. So this back side obviously is longer. This front side is shorter and you're going to hold on to that corner and then go over to the opposite corner and we're just gonna pull our fabric a little bit. We're gonna give it a little bit of a pull on that diagonal bias of the fabric. You're just pulling and what it does is it kind of helps to shift those threads back into place so they're all at the right angles and your fabric will be straight. So after we do that a little bit, we're just gonna fold it again and check and see, and it looks pretty right on. Our selvage edges are now matching. I'm gonna lay it down and give you that view as well. 
Okay, so once again, you can see that my corners are matching and my selvages are completely even with each other. One's not um, longer or out more than the other. And then as you push all of your fabric over here to the fold, you can see that the fold is nice and even. Our fabric is now perfectly on grain and we are ready to lay our pattern once piece again, down. again, I have my pattern piece ready to lay out. We want this um, grain line arrow to be parallel with our selvage edge. You might think looking at it, okay, that's, that's uh, parallel, but you actually need to check it with a measuring tape to make sure that it's accurate. That's the only way to know for sure if if your uh, grain line is perfectly on there. So what I'm gonna do is, you'll notice over here, I have the edge of my measuring tape on eight. So I'm gonna slide this over so that the bottom of my grain line is on eight, and I'm going to pin it in place. So parallel means that two lines never touch. That means they have to be equidistant from the bottom of the arrow and to the selvage edge, as well as at the top. You're learning some geometry in, the, in sewing and you didn't even know. Um, so that means we're going to come over here and we're going to make sure that this measuring tape, once again, is on eight. Sorry, let me move this down just a little bit. And you can see that our grain line is even right here. It's also meeting the edge of the ruler. Sometimes when you place a pattern down, it might, you know, be a little bit crooked. We know that it's eight from here over to here. So we want it to be eight inches from here to here. If it's not, all you do is you just slide that grain line over until it's on the beginning of your ruler and then your the end is over here on eight and then you're going to pin it in place and that is how you accurately put down your grain lines onto your fabric and then for the rest of the pattern I generally like to pin into the corners so I'm just going to come over here and you want to smooth out your pattern and make sure that there's no wrinkles in it so in the corners, I always pin into the corners diagonally like so. And if I'm going to pin, if I'm going to pin, sorry, not getting that in there right. If I'm going to pin along a seam, like the bottom seam, I'll just go parallel into that line just like this alongside, okay? And that's how you can get your patterns pinned down without any kind of tucking. Make sure that your pins are not hanging off over the pattern, of course, because when you go to sew, you don't wanna be cutting over your pins. So there you go. I hope that this tutorial was easy to help you learn the importance of grain line and how to prepare your fabric so that your grain line's straight and also how to place your patterns on. Uh, if you want to see the written out steps, I do have that on my website, sassycassiesews.com. Um, leave me a message and let me know if you've ever seen this uh, method before. I know a lot of teachers kind of skip over this part. I did learn this in fashion school and it was really emphasized the importance of getting our grain line straight. So I like to teach my students at the very beginning how to get a straight grain line and that will just help you to be more successful in having the outcome that you want on your clothing or whatever it is that you're making. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, so give me a like or a comment and let me know if you enjoyed this video.